Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. Well, they are the group that should have been at the Super Bowl, but they were snuffed by the politically correct fools who ran the Super Bowl, who put on this vanilla group from England or wherever they're from. What a rotten group. As far as the debate goes, Rubio rubbed out, Carson cursed, Cruz careened, Bush bushed, Kasich sickened, Christy christened, and Trump triumphed. Welcome to the Savage Nation. If you missed it, I'm sorry. I can't repeat myself. I like to open with one-liners, and it means you have to pay attention to uh, every word of the show. <laughs> And, of course, today is Monday, and you're hungover from the Super Bowl. You know how many chicken wings were sold during Super Bowl Sunday? Does anyone know? Raise your hand. How many chicken wings were sold? I didn't know there were that many chickens on Earth. But my son, who's a marketing genius, said, Dad, do you know how many chicken wings were sold on Super Bowl Sunday? I said, no. I don't know the number. It was more than all the chickens on the Earth. I don't know where they came from. They must be cloning chicken wings on Mars. Who eats that garbage anyway? It just shows you the audience for this. But look, I can't put it down because some very intelligent people watched the show, allegedly. A hundred million people watched it. I wasn't one of them. But I hear that amongst the hundred million, some of them are intelligent. And there it was, the Super Bowl. I, that's the day that the feminists said that uh, women get beaten up, that there's women, crime against Remember that went on for 10 years? On Super Bowl Sunday, said the feminist liars, violence against women is a an epidemic. They tried that for 10 years. It didn't work, didn't fly after a while, so they dropped it. So what do we have on the agenda for you today? We have a guest at the bottom of the hour from the Tea Party Patriots who supports Cruz. Jenny Beth Martin from the Tea Party Patriots Citizens Fund will be on the bottom of the hour to talk about why they support Ted Cruz. At the bottom of the next hour, we have Donald Trump on. No, no, I'm sorry, at the top of the next hour, right? Top of the hour, next hour, Donald Trump beginning a second hour live from New Hampshire. How anyone could be alive in New Hampshire is another question. I thought of moving there many years ago, but truthfully, I uh, could avoid the snow and the, uh, and the heroin. I didn't want to go there. Why do they use so many drugs in New Hampshire? What is that about? What is that about New England falling into a drug epidemic? Did you know that it's for the first time in history under the communist mayor of New York, the New York City public schools have closed to honor the Chinese Lunar New Year. That's right. I don't know how many days a year the children actually go to school between the religious holidays and the fake holidays that were invented for the communists. How many days a year did they learn anything? Students at New York City public schools will not go to school today. Well, they're not at school today. For the Lunar New Year, for the Lunatic New Year, they're not going to school. This is the first time public schools will be closed to honor the holiday that is celebrated by several Asian communities. Well, my answer is, we're not living in Asia, number one. And by the way, the same thing goes for the Jewish holidays, the Arab holidays. Stop it already with the ethnic holidays. When is this going to end? You want, like, Polish Sausage Day? Hungarian Goulash Day? All right, the kid, you're off tomorrow. It's Hungarian Goulash Day. And you're off the following Wednesday because it's Polish Polka Day. Crazy insanity. School is for learning. That's why the kids don't learn anything anymore. But, of course, it's snowing in New York. And a winter weather advisory has been issued by the National Weather Service. I guess it's a result of global warming. They've forgotten that in February it actually still snows in New York. You know, March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. I remember that from when I was four. It snowed in the early March in New York. That's before they invented global warming to tell us why it was snowing in early March. That's all. You want me to talk about the debate like a schmendrick? What's there to talk about? It's over. It's water under the bridge. You talk about the Zika virus. I'm suffering campaign virus. I'm suffering primary virus. I'm suffering the virus of politics in America. I feel like I've been bitten by a mosquito. My mind has gone dead from all of it. But okay, we'll talk about it. That's the uh, meatball of the show. 
Everybody wants to have, wants to meet Paul. It was an hour too long. An hour too long. There was something you didn't notice about the debate that, uh, well, you know that Rubio the Rube was finished. Oh, I didn't even mention him. Look at that. Oh, no, I said Rubio rubbed out. Carson cursed. Cruz careened. Bush bushed. Kasich sickened. Christy, I like Chris Christie, by the way. Any one of the men up there, by the way, any one of them would make a better president than either of the two communists that are being offered to us, the old foul one and the uh, older foul one. I never saw anything like this. What did they do? Did they go to the mausoleum where Lenin is buried in Moscow and do something with cloning and bring him back and call him Bernie Sanders? Because everything Bernie Sanders says is what Lenin would be offering us if he was running as a Democrat. How'd that work out for Russia? Oh, I remember, 100 million dead. That's right. They started eating each other. So it was an hour too long. The um, you know, Trump came out on top. But the thing is, Christie looked great. He looked very presidential. He looked like a take charge guy. He didn't fall for the, the, the bait. He didn't go for the bait and start attacking Trump. Finally, they woke up to that and stopped it. I can't wait till the, the hair gets at them at the next debate. What is she doing, that one, the blonde from Fox News? What does the hairdo? The hairdo indicates derangement. The hairdo that she has, and I have studied women and I've studied men my whole life, the hairdo that Kelly has right now indicates derangement to me. She looks at herself in the mirror, she rips her hair out, then they have to cut it short in order to not show that she tore it out because she knows that her face is changing like the portrait of Doriana Gray. Have you seen the nostrils on her? Her face is changing. The meaner she gets, the more poor sign she looks. Underneath that beautiful, beautiful persona, there was actually a, a poor sign individual. So now what is she trying to get, become Rachel Maydow? And I mean, the other night with Rachel Maydow hugging the two candidates. Have you ever seen anything as low as that? What a joke America's politics are. But anyway, it was an hour too long. Christie attacking the kid was good. Rubio is finished with the over, overly sized knot. It looked like he didn't even know how to make a tie. It looked like somebody gave him a tie and put it on his neck. It made his head look small. He looked like a kid, the ice cream man. Why do you think I've called Rubio the ice cream man for all these years? Because he looks like an ice cream man that they found in Miami, dingling the bell, and they said to him, hey, kid, you're going to be a senator. He said, what's a senator? Don't worry, you'll find out. You don't have to know. All you got to do is act like you're a senator. Then now, kid, you're going to be president. Most of the commentators' questions were really set up to pit one candidate against another. But, to be honest, where there was more factual discussion of topics than in previous debates. If only they would ask Hillary and the, the, the Leninist what they think of this. Bush, forget about it. Carson, the poor guy, what is he doing? Isn't it at this point, I told you what fortunes are made during these, these uh, primaries. You don't understand the finances, do you? There is so much money raised during these primaries for the candidates that they can't even spend it when they drop out. They have to spend it for years. They can't steal it or they go to jail. But they raise so much money that they can then they dispense. It's a money raiser. Now, there's something that was pointed out by one of my Facebook um, viewers, Caroline Hernessy. And she said what happened before the debate began was very telling of the personalities of the candidates. She said, as the candidates were being called out on the stage, they called Christie first, which I thought was embarrassing, by the way. Why they do that? Who picked the order that they called the candidates? It was like a gladiator, like a Roman arena, calling them out of the back, out of the, out of the bowels of the... Then they forgot Ben Carson. They called him. He didn't come out. And uh, while the camera was filming behind the curtain, the candidates made their way towards the stage. Poor old Dr. Carson did not hear his name being called. So old Doc Carson remained where he was, behind the curtain, standing like a schmendrick back there. All the others are marching up for the diplomas, and this poor kid is sitting there and even hear his name being called. I'm sitting there saying, God, Ben, they called your name already. And so he didn't know what to do. Next comes Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, instead of tapping Dr. Carson on the shoulder and being a decent human being and telling him his name was already called, proceeded to make a smirking, dismissive, whatever type of expression on his face and just left poor old Doc Carson behind. No one told him that he was called. So what happened next? Next comes Donald Trump, who people call mean, right? Just like me. But he's actually the nicest guy on the stage, just as I am. And Trump sees Carson 
standing there like a clueless Schmendrick. And instead of stepping over him like a dead body, like Cruz just did, what does Trump do? He stands next to Carson, and he talks to him, cluing him in that his name was called. And Trump waits with Carson. He ushers him to go ahead of him. And then Trump follows suit in the order the names have been called. Did you notice any of this? Did any of you actually notice this behind the stage? All the other candidates stepped over the dead body of Carson, so to speak. Trump stopped there and said, hey, Dr. Carson, or whatever it could have been, you know, your name was called, but, you know, you didn't hear it, so you go ahead of me. Could you believe this? So my listener says this was a behind-the-scenes glimpse into character. One, the Christian Cruz talks very well about his values, but does not seem to literally walk the talk. This instant being further proof. Trump, who speaks caustically at times, turns out is the one with a big heart and a sense of class and decency, who does many good things for which no one credits him for. This, to me, summed up the whole debate before it even began. It spoke volumes to me. 855-407-282. I got already a caller on eminent domain. I went to sleep. I told you I feel like I'm bitten by the campaign mosquito. I cannot talk about eminent domain. I don't care about it. How's that? I care about crushing ISIS into the Stone Age. I care about grinding them up like, a, like, a, like a, an Anopheles mosquito. I care about them being sprayed with raid and stop plaguing the world and spreading their, their, their virus around the planet. That's all I care about. I want the borders closed. I want the Muslims to stop flooding in. I want ISIS crushed. That's it. The rest, do what you want. Leave me alone already. Because without national security, there'll be no security at all. Stop with the fine points already about uh, Ben Franklin and the kite. We all know about the Constitution. You didn't invent it. All these people who quote the Constitution every day, like none of us ever heard of it. They hold it up like the Holy Grail. We know about the Constitution. Everyone knows about it. We all love it. Stop holding it up like your grandfather wrote it, for God's sakes. We know the Cruz is constitutionally correct. We get that. Cruz is a brilliant man. Wonderful. We get that. Unelectable. Now, in my opinion, unelectable. He looks a little too like a van a little too much like a vampire. If you were if you're filming a Cohen Brothers movie with the right makeup and the right lighting. Okay, let me put it to you this way. If you were a director and of the the number of candidates on that stage, you wanted to choose somebody to play a ghoulish vampire, who would you pick? I mean, run down the list. Who could more easily who could more easily be cast if you were a film director? All right, you don't want to answer the question. And you say, well, what does it have to do with anything you're picking on? I mean, now you're name calling. No, I'm telling you how people see things. Okay, how do I know I'm right? Take a look at the morons watching that that creature called Beyonce with the legs, the, the dancer legs. The horses that were dancing there with the, with the uh, Black Panther hats. Okay, so you had them dancing. Here are some of the most spoiled people in the world. She was born into a rich family, and she acts like she's down with uh, Black Lives Matter. All of a sudden, she's a big radical. Another one, another big radical like Obama. Down with the people, her and Michelle. Right, they really suffered as youths. If the American people are so stupid as to accept this garbage during a Super Bowl game, do you think that they really know anything about who's going to run? No, they're going to look at the people. Uh, forget about the Democrats. It doesn't matter what they do. They're going to they're gonna get all the votes of you-know-who. Do I have to tell you who's going to vote for them? Do I have to spell it out for you in English? You know what they're going to do. They don't care what the Republicans do. Every woman, with the exception of the 19 women who listen to the Savage Nation, maybe it's 29 now, it went up. The 29 Savagettes are the only ones who will vote for a Republican. The others are so stupid, they'll vote for Hillary Clinton just because she's not a man. That's a great, that's a great idea, isn't it? Hey, look at that. It's not a man. Let's vote for her. That, that makes great sense. Now, what sense does that make? Why would you vote for a woman just because she's a woman? Tell me what you're going to get out of that. I ran through the first stop set without trying. That means the show will be great. I invite you to stay put. I'll be back. <laughs> I, I mean, I've used their bumper music since 94. Hope they don't mind. Okay, 20 seconds, that's the max. Otherwise, you get sued. <laughs> There's a